Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week we're going to be talking about upgrading my Windows 98 machine from this reverse sleeper to this classic beige Dell. But of course, first, we're going to need to make ourselves a drink. For this week's drink, we're going to be making a bourbon pumpkin smash. And to do that, we're going to first make two things ahead of time. And that is a pumpkin simple syrup and the spice to rim the glass with, which the directions are going to be in the description. So we're going to start with a regular glass and we're just going to take a slice of lemon and we're just going to rim the edge of the glass and then we're going to put it into our rimming sugar mixture and just get that all nice and on the rim of our glass. Then we're going to set that aside and we're going to use our shaker cup for the rest of this. So we're going to start by filling this with ice. Then we're going to add one ounce of our pumpkin spice simple syrup. Then we'll add two ounces of bourbon and one quarter ounce of lemon juice. And we're gonna shake that together. Then we're gonna fill our glass with ice, strain our drink into it. Then we're gonna top that with up to four ounces of club soda, really until you get it near the top. Give that a quick stir. And there we have a bourbon pumpkin smash. Cheers. Wow. Thanksgiving the right way. <laughs> All right, let's get to working on this Windows 98 machine. So this episode continues the journey of replacing the PCs, the reverse sleepers with classic vintage machines. When I originally conceived of the concept, I went by processor. And so that went 8088, 286, 386, 486, Pentium, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4. Easy, eight computers, eight processor types. It didn't work well because I also paired an operating system to each of the processors and Windows 98 got stuck on a Pentium 2, which is what this guy is. This is a 450 megahertz Pentium 2 processor. And in and of that self, it's not bad. It was a machine that would have existed at the time that Windows 98 came out and it would have been period accurate for that. But a lot of games and things hung on a little bit later and took advantage of some of the faster processors in a Pentium 3. This machine came to me because I went to uh, buy a case, an unopened Chief Tech Dragon case. And so I found one in Hannibal, Missouri. And so I went up to get that case and in talking about it, they're like, well, what are you gonna do in it? Are you gonna put a new computer in it? And I was like, no, I'm gonna put a Pentium 3 or a Pentium 4 in it. And they're like, oh, got a whole bunch of those just piled up. We're about to take them to the landfill or to the recycler. And I was like, oh, I'll take those. And so they're like 50 bucks. And I was like, excellent. And uh, out of that, I got, I think four or five pretty decently spec machines. And one of those machines was this Dell Dimension 4100. And this Dell Dimension 4100 is pretty great because it's the last Dell that was in beige. Up until 2001, you could buy this machine. It was the mid-tier machine. It was this Pentium 3, and the, there was a higher tier one that had RD RAM, and it was the XPS version. And then that was the beige one, and then that was in 2000, and they swapped that out with the Pentium 4 version, which was the black and silver, the first black and silver Dell. And this guy stuck as the mid-range. And so it w could be configured up to one gigahertz. Now this one is actually spec'd at, uh, I think it's an 866 megahertz Pentium 3. So if I come across the one gigahertz, and I think it can even take a 1.1 gigahertz, uh, I'm gonna try to swap that out. But for right now, we're just gonna do it with the eight, uh, 866 or 833, whatever's in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the solid state drives from this guy and uh, my SCSI and a lot of those things and bring those over into this Pentium 3, which should get us a nice, cool working Windows 98 machine. So now that you know that huge long history, let's get started upgrading and side grading this Windows 98 machine. All right, I've got our patients here side by side. And uh, I'm just gonna take the lids off and then we're gonna go and see what we have inside. And hopefully this guy isn't too dirty. 
solid state we're gonna have to get inside there okay all right we are a little bit dirty so let's go ahead and use our canned air And luckily for us, it's mostly dust. I'm gonna pull out these cards, see what we have, see what needs to go back in. Looks like we've got a Sound Blaster Live, and then this guy. We have a Sound Blaster Live, but like a way more souped up one. So let's go ahead and move that guy over. Yeah, looks like we've got the digital audio expansion on that Sound Blaster Live. Got our CD in. And our, I think, modem in. Yeah. Tad in. Put that in. So the Pentium 2 has the serial ATA card, which is what I was using to boot. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that guy across. All right, I am gonna move this ribbon cable going to this digital audio output board. And we've got kind of a blank space here, which is great. I've got an extra port, so that's where that's gonna go. And we'll just flip that ribbon cable around. Yeah, let's, let's do our graphics card first before we do that. So currently, in the Pentium 3, we have an AGP, NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX. And in our Pentium 2, we had an NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX. <laughs> so it looks like we have the same one. This is an MX, not sure. I don't know what our RAM difference is here. Let me look this up real quick. All right, so based on what I currently own, we're gonna go with this, which is a NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX 400 64-bit, 64 megabyte graphics card. So I guess all the other ones that I have are 32 megabyte and this one's 64, so that'll maybe make it a little better. And then I've got this guy, which is USB 2 ports. So yeah, why not? And finally, we'll just go ahead and move this network card across, which is just a regular, it's like 10 100. So now I just need to flip this guy over and get to the SSD and get that mounted in here to be our hard drive. And hopefully everything works with the, with the Dell's BIOS and doesn't freak out on us. There's our Crucial SSD. Ooh, I just realized I might not have power for a SATA. Probably gonna have to get an adapter here. Okay, so 
So let's see if we have a an adapter that can go to this guy. And I'm not gonna have a proper tray holder, but the nice thing about these is they're light, so you can usually just hold them in place with one screw. So I'll be right back. Found one, very excited. So that's going to give us SATA power from a standard Molex. Then just the SATA cable. And then, like I said, it's really lightweight, so any screw that can hold this in is going to be what I go with. Also, I don't have the Dell drive trays. So even that one screw definitely in there really well. Okay, and then we'll just connect that up to our SATA controller should hopefully show up as a SCSI device like it did on the Pentium 2. And we'll connect this up to our Molex. And that should give us the power we need. And that should be it. So here we have the machine in its final home ready for some testing, but I just wanted to let you know that one of the things that we put in didn't quite work as planned, and that was the SATA controller. For some reason, and I'm not sure if it's just a BIOS issue or if it's a Dell issue or if it's the SATA controller card, on the Pentium 2 that I pulled it out of, it showed up as a SCSI device and it just assumed it, it had a BIOS on the card and it just let that BIOS do its thing and it let it boot from it as if it was a SCSI hard drive. And on here, for whatever reason, it doesn't do the SCSI BIOS thing and maybe it's a configuration thing that I just didn't have set up, but as far as I could tell, it wasn't working. So what I did is I put a SATA to IDE converter onto the SSD and everything works, which is great. The only other thing is uh, is that uh, I went ahead and did a clean install of Windows 98 and was quickly reminded of why I switched to the Mac <laughs> because every driver had to be installed and then the computer rebooted and then the next driver install and then reboot and install and reboot and all of that. And there might be some Windows tricks to this that I don't know, but I remember that being very frustrating and it taking forever for me to do this clean install. But here we are, everything's in here, clean install, ready to go and let's power it up. And as you can see, everything is here. It is working and it's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna show you here in my control panel. For whatever reason, it says Windows ME is my system version. Um, I think I updated some software that may have had some Windows e ME components, but you can see we've got our processor and 512 RAM and a device manager that has no errors, which is excellent. Um, I, oh, that's what it is. I installed the USB 2.0 drivers for that and I think they pulled those from ME and that might change something there. But this does have USB 2, which is awesome for, uh, for this machine. So of course, I'm starting off with one of my favorite games of all time, Age of Empires 2 with the Conqueror's expansion. Greaton, Chopper, Mandatum. Oh boy. Chopper. Um, English maybe? Yay. Bulden. 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 Greeting. Greeting. 
Man, I love this game. All right, uh, <laughs> I have to stop it. Get on to the next one. Ready. Something is amiss here. The room is filling with poison gas. It appears as if the Trade Federation is preparing to attack Nabu. Find a way to open this door and hurry! The door is open. Let's go. The choice is yours, my Padawan learner. So I guess that really wraps it up for this Dell Dimension 4100, the last of the full-size Dell beige towers. The end of an era, the beginning of the <laughs> crazy wild west that happened, uh, where, you know, this is right on the verge. This is the last of Intel's dominance before AMD kind of took, took everything from them for a little bit. This is the last of the beige era. This is the last of the office environment setting the standard for what PCs would look like. So I don't know, it just brought up a lot of things to me that I had forgotten about. And of course, Age of Empires 2, I played that nonstop whenever I was right out of college and, uh, and in college and that game just, yeah, is, is definitely a certain time in my life and I love it and this PC just kind of brought a lot of that back to me. So um, I'm really glad I built this. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time.